For millennia, man has found a special fascination for the land called the Baca. In this place, situated in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains of southern Colorado, there are to be found many traces of ancient cultures. Many of the ancient peoples of America have looked to it as a place of spiritual regeneration in the past and for the future. In 1978, the 400 square mile Baca Grande estate was acquired by Morris and Hannah Strong. The Baca is one of the great sacred centers of this world. For hundreds and thousands of years, the indigenous peoples of this continent have considered it so. They have come here for some of the most significant ceremonies. Their holy people, shamans, would come here to seek their powers and develop enlightened states of mind. They would send their young people here to seek their visions, you know, for the future. And they would come here for sacred healing ceremonies. And uh, it was considered to be so sacred that no one ever fought in this valley. There was never any wars amongst the people. And that's why the Navajo called this place the Bloodless Valley. Hannah and Morris Strong have formed the Manitou Foundation with the vision of preserving this unspoiled wilderness area, creating a model of sustainable living and making it a home to the wisdom traditions of the world. As St. Augustine spoke of beauty ever ancient, ever new, it may be through an understanding of our ancient traditions that mankind can rediscover eternal truths and find answers to problems that beset humanity as it enters the 21st century. White Rainbow is a Cree medicine man from Alberta, Canada. Somehow we've come to a point in our life, in this stage, this time of, of life, that we are in danger. I'm sure that every one of you are aware of this. I am only here, I suppose, to remind you that this land, this sacred land, there are keepers, grandfathers, grandmothers throughout these hills and these valleys who have been here for <coughs> thousands of years. And our people came here to be healed, to rest, to get clear vision and guidance of how we can become close to Mother Earth and all living things. So I'm here to remind you that whatever happens here in this land, it's the will of the Creator and the Great Spirit. This land is sacred. There is a, a great purpose for this place, for the future of our survival. My guess is that this area was uh, something like a postgraduate school for many of the shamanic folks that came through, and there was probably a caretaker group of medicine people that welcomed many, many different tribes. And they would come here and they would do their sacred work. But it was interesting because it, in a sense, provided the early model for what Hannah is uh, trying to do now. John Milton is an ecologist who leads Sacred Passage Wilderness Retreats in the Baca. In exploring the area, he has discovered an extraordinary display of ancient stone seats. The seats themselves, you might say, are a collaborative enterprise between the stones and the ancient peoples that lived here. I suddenly realized that it was difficult to walk more than 50 feet in any direction without bumping into something like that. We have found that the seats are there for a good reason, and that each one of them has a very unique uh, capacity to provide healing energies. This particular seat works particularly on the Dantian, and, uh, or sometimes in Japanese that's called the Hara. It's a very, very powerful energy field. You can notice that it's the head of this channel, and many of the meditation seats work with channels. When you sit on a seat like this, you make a connection with uh, place, connecting inner nature and outer nature, and then even going deeper than that into a more fundamental uh, nature, which is the nature of being itself. 
Ra is an environmental artist who has created a stone circle in the Baca. My job is, is to form something from, uh, you know, from my heart. And uh, everyone has a different language. You know, everyone's talking about uh, uh, their spiritual feelings with different types of words. And so it's up to them to come here by themselves or in a group, and then they can use the words that fit uh, their feelings. Ra's next project will be to build hermitage on this ridge above the Baca for people who wish to come and do retreats. I, I think there's a, there's a real need for places of thanksgiving, places that are designed to open us up and to, uh, to make us feel thankful for, for our lives, places that are designed to put our lives in perspective and uh, there's nothing more powerful than, than being up in the mountains to put your life in perspective. Everything is so grand that you look at your own self and your personal relationships and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's very clearing. Wayne Redcloud, a Cree medicine man, has plans to establish a center for Native American studies at the Baca. The creator is the trees. When I wake up in the morning, I look up and I see the mountain. And I say, thank you very much for another day. And that's, that's how close and that's how I'm related to Mother Earth. But I am part of nature. I am that law. And that's the spirituality that's missing from the white man, the true spirituality. Spirituality, as I say, comes in four forms. The natural element, earth, wind, fire, and water. The four seasons and the four gifts of life. To hear, to listen. And what you, what you hear, to be able to see. Once you've seen, to understand. And then, that's when you, that's when you speak, not before. These are the rules that are very important, you know, to keep the environment as it was. And it's not too late for the Indian to say something about Mother Earth. That Mother Earth still has breasts that you can back to, to feed on. Not to molest, to feed on. The Indian faith is very straight, but it's wide. You can manipulate it. But don't go over that line. You're given enough so you, you got satisfaction, peace within yourself. And that is Mother Earth. And primarily, this is what we're hoping to set up here. To bring some of that the knowledge you know, that was passed on from the old people. I think what we're searching for is what we have lost. We lost what was really here. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel that is the whole uh, Native American uh, ceremonies, way of living caretaking of this earth, being in, in contact with nature so completely that we become one with it. Once everything comes to your left, that's where you have to put the pressure on. Berta Gotterup is a potter from Denmark who lives in the Baca. Something pulled me here right away. I knew I couldn't come barging in because I felt what was here demanded that. So I was looking for a sign, and I was looking for a sign. I looked up, and the clouds were coming in. And what I saw was a buffalo and an Indian. And I says, uh-huh, thank you, I can come. I just see when I start something, some images starts to come. And uh, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I have to do that. Like the water spirits, when I started the water spirits. I do meditate on them, and it's very healing to me, it really is. We lost so much, we really have, but that's okay. You know, it's like the snake biting his own tail, it comes back again. I see it in the artwork, that's what I see it in. I, I see that spirit coming back again, yeah, coming back again. And, I, and, and it's like a, a fruit, the decay has to take so completely 
it's all right to start blooming and growing again. I think it's wonderful we have this opportunity mm -hmm. yeah, that we have today. And it's good for the children. The children need this place. Flying so high Circle around the universe On wings of pure light Owe chi chai o Owe chi chai o Owe hai o Owe hai o May we all fly like eagles You can take a breath and blow your air out as you lift up your body. It has been said that a community without elders and without children has no link to the past or to the future and is doomed to live in an eternal present. The Manitou Foundation has supported many educational projects, including the Sierra Buena Children's Circle, a preschool. Okay, we're going to do our lotus flower meditation. Close your eyes. Okay. And then the problem is closing your eyes, just make them half closed, okay? Now focus our attention on our heart. Heart. Everyone knows where your heart is. All week long, what have we been talking about? Feelings. Feelings, right. What kind of feelings have we talked about already? Sad. 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 Happy. Happy. Peaceful. 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 Angry. Angry. Daydreaming. Daydreaming. Daydreaming, right. Empty feelings. Let's see. Happy pieces. How do you feel when you feel happy? <laughs> Try to really feel it. <laughs> well, you made me laugh, David. That's pretty good. Adjoining the Baca Grande estate is the small village of Crestone, originally established as a gold mining community in the late 1800s. Extending from the mountains to the west is the San Luis Valley. At 7,500 feet, it is the highest agricultural valley in the world, and agriculture now provides the basis for the area's economy. As part of the growing concern that modern mechanistic farming practices with their intensive use of energy and chemicals may be destroying the viability of the very land we live on, the Strongs have encouraged a more traditional and holistic view of land management. Drawing inspiration from farming techniques of visiting Hopi elders and other indigenous peoples, intensive trials have been undertaken in potential new crops for the valley such as Tibetan barley and medicinal herbs. A bank of pure seed strains from throughout the world has been established at the Baca. Recently, the Manitou Foundation has set aside land as a permanent home to continue these experiments in sustainable agriculture, combined with a solar, energy-efficient community under the direction of Paul Mutzinger. I have always liked the, an open, uh, the big skies, you know, the high and dry, in terms of the agriculture and things I do, it's a little bit challenging. Everything that we do here has an effect of all the different plants. We have to be careful with what we disturb. What a little ecosystem you've got down here. Isn't it something? Botanist Margot Williams is surveying the wide variety of ecosystems that exist in the Baca, cataloging the many medicinal herbs that are indigenous to the area. Things up, and we'll take a look and see if there is there's anything that's endangered. Okay. The more unusual plants seem to be fairly confined to the stream banks itself. So if you can um, more or less uh, prevent access in some of those places, I think you'd be all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but certainly it's, it's great grazing ground. This meadow over here and, and this area. It's just a concern for how human beings can live on land appropriately, and making all the decisions that go with that. Where to put the road? Where to put your well? What kind of energy source you're going to use? how you're going to dispose of your waste, insulate, heat, uh, how much recycling is appropriate, all those questions that go into sustainable living. I appreciate the fact here, the openness. There is a spirit of concern here that maybe could be called the forefront. A lot of people have made the choice to come here. It's not a great job market, so people have to make an extra effort to live here. There's a wide variety of spiritual groups and outlooks and intents, yet they all seem to coexist, accept one another, intermingle freely. And that kind of open, free thought is very, very conducive to just, just healthy lifestyle. What we're trying to demonstrate here at the Baca is basically examples, living examples of uh, how we can live a much more harmonious lifestyle 
uh, that is sustainable. I mean, right now, mankind is not living in a sustainable manner. The earth cannot sustain our lifestyles. So through these solar communities, you know, ecological communities, uh, ecological farm projects, we're attempting to demonstrate that it is possible to live simple, harmonious lifestyles that are sustainable and yet very fulfilling. And uh, a lot of the guidance we get from the ancient truths. In 1980, the Strongs gave 200 acres of land in the Baka to His Holiness the 16th Gyalwa Karmapa, head of the Kagyu order of Tibetan Buddhism. On visiting the Baka, the Karmapa had a vision that this would be a place where the ancient wisdom and endangered culture of Tibet could be kept alive and passed on to future generations. The world of nature is as vivid and real for the Tibetans as it is to the Native Americans. The venerable Kempo Kata Rinpoche, the Karmapa's representative in the United States, uses ancient Tibetan knowledge to locate the eye of the land, a harmonious natural site for a stupa or shrine to the Buddha to be built on the land. The stupa will consecrate the land before construction of a Tibetan medical college, the first establishment of its kind in the West. Tibetan medicine combines natural healing with yogic understanding of the nature of disease. The 40-foot-high stupa, similar to this smaller stupa built earlier in the Baka, will embody the aspirations of the Buddha to bring into harmony the worlds of nature, spirit, and humankind. Before construction begins, a ceremony is held by Tibetan lamas. Precious relics and treasures being buried here hold the wisdom and compassion of all Buddhas. The approach is to empower the environment rather than to take advantage of it. Offerings of food and drink, fire and juniper are made to the spirits of the natural world. Kempo Kata explains. Today's ceremony is to pay our respects to the local spirits of the waters and the mountains and to the goddess of the earth, beings that we may not be able to perceive directly. If negativity is allowed to accumulate in an area, the inhabitants cannot experience good health, prosperity, or spiritual enrichment. This stupa will help maintain the positive energy while subduing the negative, not just in this area, but in the whole of the United States of America. The stupa is called Tashi Gomang, or the stupa of many doors, symbolizing the many avenues taught by the Buddha to reach enlightenment. As a Tibetan yogi high in the Himalayas once sang, all the victorious ones of the three times teach the 84,000 paths of Dharma. Although the number of these teachings is limitless like the boundless expanse of sky, they are given only for the purpose of understanding the nature of mind. I would say that, that Buddhism in general being a yogic culture and the Western culture not being yogic, the first teaching is what is a yogic culture and how do you relate, realize body-mind and mind-body as parts of the same spectrum. Richard Baker Roshi is abbot of the Crestone Mountain Zen Center. My feeling is that what Hannah and Maurice are doing is, is a particularly American in a good sense. To have in here in America a mountain with uh, temples and religions from all over the world is particularly American and that's, I find that good, it makes me feel good. Like Tibetan Buddhism, the essence of Zen Buddhism is to explore the nature of mind. This is done through the practice of meditation, or Zazen. Through Zazen, the individual can quiet the mind and dispel the illusion that he is separate from the universe that surrounds him. In their journey, the Zen practitioners follow the path of the Buddha, as it has been passed down from teacher to student for 2,500 years. We offer to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and all life in every world. 
It's a relief to find a, a man-made teaching that brings you to the threshold of the mystery. I think, again, the West, uh, most religions are the mysteries revealed by the mystery. It's a teaching revealed by the God, a revealed teaching. Buddhism is a language, a human creation to approach the mystery. And uh, I think for some people that's very satisfying, at least for me. In 1982, the Carmelites, a contemplative and mystical order of the Catholic Church, built a hermitage in the Baca, the first non-native spiritual tradition to be established here. Mother Tessa Bilecki is abbess of the monastery. One of the important elements of all of Carmelite spirituality is the desert, or what we call the desert experience. The whole the purpose of the life the metaphor used is climbing the mountain, the ascent of Mount Carmel. So for us to be able to live in an, env in an environment where mountains meet the desert, where we are actually in the geography of the desert and the geography of the mountain is extraordinary because then we are not merely living metaphorically but in a very graphic, physical manner. We are living out uh, the metaphors of the spirituality of the Carmelite tradition. My favorite description of what we mean by mysticism or contemplation is a long, loving look at the real. Now that begins with anything real, small r, whether you're looking at the mountain or the other person or the food that you're eating. And eventually, of course, that expands and grows into an experience of a, a long, loving look at the real with a capital R and from many different perspectives, there are many different ways to understand what we mean by the real. Ultimately, for the Christian, what we mean by the real is God. I mean, God is this incredible, spacious experience that, uh, you know, the ineffable, the unnameable, uh, but th which is accessible and common, ordinary, everyday experience. The grace of God is everywhere. major work in this community could be summed up in what we call the art of being human or what does it mean to be a truly alive human being because it is a very profound Christian theological principle articulated by Thomas Aquinas that grace perfects nature and so what our whole work is about is how do we enhance human nature? How do we help people come to a greater humanness that will then, because once you are fully human, you are already divine. The Haidekan ashram in the Baka has been built by followers of Haidekan Baba or Babaji. In May 1990, followers of Babaji came from around the world to join in a celebration for world peace. Babaji is believed to be a Mahavatar, a manifestation of the Lord Shiva who has appeared in human form throughout history as a link between humanity and the divine. Babaji's most recent manifestation occurred in India from 1970 to 1984. The core of Babaji's teaching is to love the whole of creation. The true religion lies in the heart. is a close disciple of Babaji.
Babaji did not differentiate between religions. Instead, he referred to the Sanatan Dharma, the eternal religion or truth of which Hinduism is only a small part. In the past, different teachers have taught different paths, but they all lead to the same goal. Now is the time for all spiritual communities who are connected to the same eternal truth to come together. Babaji wanted more interconnection between people of different nations, as this is the only way we can have peace on earth. The aspiration of the Manitou Foundation is to provide a place for the religions of the world to come together, to set aside their differences and to rediscover their common source. I feel that uh, the different religions um, all go into the same mystery, in a sense, into the same forest. There are different paths into the same forest, but they end up at different places in the forest. And so when you end up, uh, you can see your Christian friend over to the left, oh, you're way over, hi. Yeah. Maybe your Sufi friend over here, or maybe even a Buddhist from another lineage yeah. is somewhere else. Yeah. And I feel we're all wandered up into this mountain on various points, but we fertilize each other, yeah. even though we're different points in the on the mountain and in the mystery of what this world and life is all about. And in Christianity we have this wonderful expression from St. Augustine. Augustine speaks in terms of beauty ever ancient, ever new. And what fascinates me is what is most ancient is what is always most new. And what we think of as most new is really what is most ancient. And, and in my own life I use the words primordial and perennial. What interests me is what is most primordial, what is most basic and fundamental in the universe. And if it is most basic and most fundamental, then it is also perennial. That means that for all times, for all places, for all cultures, for all peoples, for all traditions, it is of value. And that is what unifies all of us. It doesn't matter what era we live in, it doesn't matter what culture we come out of, it doesn't matter what religious tradition we come out of, when in fact, uh, down through the ages, there is a handful of people who have known uh, not only the questions but answers and that is our hope for the future and it is it is within the wisdom traditions of the world that this um, legacy has been preserved down through the ages at a time when mankind's relentless pursuit of material values has put our very existence on earth into question the Manitou Foundation is supporting a different kind of experiment in the Baka, an experiment that may set an example of a more enlightened and sustainable way of living, in harmony with nature and guided by ancient and eternal truths. Fundamentally, mankind's crisis is one of the spirit, and in keeping with its own timeless tradition, the Baka offers hope for regeneration.